Hello, in this video, I'm showing you how you go about servicing your MagnaClean Professional 2. Now, there are several different ways you can service this MagnaClean, and I'm going to show you each of those, and then you can decide which one will suit you best. I will show you exactly what I do when I service the MagnaClean, and the additional things which I do, which AD don't cover, to ensure that I don't get any leaks. This will also extend the life of some of the parts. At the end of the video, I'll go through an important issue which I sometimes find, which you should watch out for when you're servicing your Magna Clean. So stick around to the end so you don't miss those. Right, now let's quickly wish through my intro and get on with showing you how to service your Magna Clean. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. So here we go then. This is the MagnaClean Professional 2. Now, whenever you come to clean these filters, you will almost certainly spill some water. So always put down a towel and protect your carpet or anything underneath because it's virtually impossible not to spill a little water. Now, also when we're doing this, we don't want our heating or hot water running. So make sure your controls are turned off or maybe even turn off the main switch like that. If you have a combi boiler, then maybe just turn off the power on the front of the boiler. Now in your pack of bits, you should have this little spanner here. If you can't find the small valve spanner, then at the end of the ring spanner on the handle, you'll also find the spanner to close the valves. Now I always tend to use my little adjustable spanner because it just grips the valves just a little bit better and also means I can just rotate it around and get to them if I need to in a different position. Now these valves only turn a quarter turn and I turn the long part of the handle from facing each other to facing the pot and the label goes from green to red. I'm doing the same here, turning it around, and there it's gone to red, and now it's facing the pot. Now both these valves are closed. Now before you go taking the lid off, AD recommend that you use a bleed key and release any air or pressure out of the pot before you remove the lid. Just watch out when you do this because you may get some water coming out, so have a little bowl handy to catch any water just to contain that spillage. Now I don't always do this because sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't help at all. But it's probably a good idea if you're new to doing this. Now, as I said earlier, there are several different ways of cleaning the MagnaClean. Now this next stage I feel is unnecessary unless you want to remove the pot completely. Now AD tell you to remove this plug in the bottom of the pot here and drain it out completely. Now I very rarely do this and when I spoke to some of my local engineer friends they tend to say they don't do it either because you don't really need to do it if you're just going to clean the magna clean by undoing the lid and removing the magna clean. Now you can see I've just undone the bleed screw on the top of the magna clean that will then let the air go into the top of the magna clean and the water is now running out the bottom of the magna clean gradually emptying it of any water. I'll be interested to know how many people do drain it out so you can leave a message in the comments below why you drain it out and how it helps you and maybe that would be useful for others to see. Now whilst that's just draining out I'll just undo the bleed key completely. I'll remove it and show you what to service on it. So basically there are two little rubber o-rings on there and it's always a good idea to grease those up. You can see them just there. Grease them up, put a bit of silicon grease on them so they stay nice and lubricated and they obviously seal the pot so you don't get any leaks. And I'm just going to put that back in again. You can see the water has stopped running out now so I can do this up tight again so I don't accidentally lose it when I go and clean the bag to clean. There we go, that's tight again and the pot's now drained. I'm now going to use the large ring spanner to undo the lid so I can remove the magna clean and then clean it. Now just a word of caution, these magna clean lids can be really tight and really hard to undo. Take a look and see what's above and below the magna clean because you don't want to put a lot of force on the lid and then cause a leak on another fitting or even on the magna clean valves themselves. 
So if the lid is really tight, you may want to consider removing the whole magna clean and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Watch out for a bit more water running out the bottom as you undo the lid if you have removed the plug in the bottom. Now, whenever you lift the magna clean out, you will always get water dripping. So this is a part which can be a bit messy. So make sure you've got a, a bowl handy to catch any water. You can see it gets caught in the bottom and it also gets caught in the top of the magna clean. Now you can see all that black magnetite that's got caught by the magna clean. Now, depending how clean your system is, depends on how much magnetite you will have on the filter. Look at this one here. This came out of another system. It is thick and black with magnetite. That stuff is destroying the system and their boiler. Be really careful because this black magnetite, it stains if you get it on your carpet or other places. So do be really careful. I've now removed the plastic sheath from the magnets. Be careful you don't lose any magnetite when you do this. You can then unclip the cover from the non-metallic capture area like that. You can then give it a good wash off. Make sure the whole thing, including the top and the bottom, are all nice and clean. And there we go. That's all nice and clean now and ready to be refitted. We can then clip and rotate that bottom cover back on again like that. We can then either drop it in the pot or put it onto the magnet like this. And then you can put the whole thing back in again. Now, before I do that, I always remove the seal from the lid and clean it and grease it with some silicon lubricant. Get a small screwdriver and just gently lever it out of the lid. I then get a tissue and I make sure that it is all nice and clean. Make sure there is no little bits of magnetite stuck on it. I'll then clean the top of the magna clean because you want to make sure that's nice and clean as well. And then also clean inside the lid of the magna clean. So get a tissue, get it right up in that corner there where the seal goes and make sure that it's all nice and clean. Because if we get any little bits or dirt stuck on there, there's a good possibility it might leak. I'm now putting on a nice good coating of silicon grease. Okay, you can use Vaseline also, but I always use silicon grease. I will also put it on the top of the pot like that. And then we just need to drop the seal back into the lid carefully, making sure it's nicely seated in that bottom edge. We then put the sheath back on again, and then we can drop the whole lot back into the pot like that. Now a little bit more information about the O-ring. Over time, these O-rings go hard and they go flat. So give it a pinch, make sure that it is still quite soft and rubbery, make sure it's bendy and it hasn't gone hard. And like I said, they also go flat. So just make sure that they hasn't gone flat because it makes the lid really hard to get off when the O-ring starts going hard and it goes a lot flatter. And then there's more chance of a leak. And the last thing we want is a leak. And I'll leave a link to a new O-ring in the description below. And then we can just do the lid up hand tight. And once we've got it down, we can then use the spanner. And literally, we just nip this up. We don't go crazy. We just give it a little turn and a little extra nip. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Don't forget to put your plug back in the bottom, though. You can see there's a couple of O-rings on there. And I'm just going to get some silicon grease as usual. And I'm going to make sure that those O-rings are nicely greased up. So in the future, they're going to come out nice and easily. And it also keeps them well lubricated and it also helps to prevent any leaks. There we go. Now I'm just going to pop it back in a hole in the bottom there. Do that up hand tight until it stops. And then get the little spanner and then carry on nipping that up. You could also use the adjustable span if you want to like this and just finish it off and then do that and then just nip it up. It is not something you do really tight. You just nip it up and that's it. That's all you need to do. Now, if you do wish to remove the whole pot for cleaning, then we just undo this red screw here. We just turn that around like that until it's screw all the way in. And then we hold and we squeeze the trigger like that and give the magna clean a wiggle and then hopefully it will just pull off the two valves like that there we go and then that's the whole pot removed again be really careful you don't drip any water when you're doing this because although we have drained the water out of the magna clean there is a recess in the bottom and there's a good quarter of an inch of water so as soon as you take it off and you tip the pot that water is going to run out and you don't want that dripping on your carpet now on the magna clean pot or canister as ad call it there's the speed fit connections onto the valves 
There's no easy way of servicing those. And if it leaks from there when it's refitted, all you can do is to replace the whole canister. Now that is one reason why I would not remove the canister unless I have to. Rubber O-rings over time, they go hard and they go flat. And if you disturb them after many years, there's a good chance they'll leak if you try to reuse them. Good engineers will always replace them wherever possible. So after about five years, I will be very concerned about removing these canisters and then refitting them because of the possibility of getting a leak. It may be possible to get a little tool in there and hook out that O-ring. Let me know if you've managed to do that. AD do not sell these seals as a spare part and they do not come in the seals replacement kit. The last thing I want to do is turn to the customer and say that the canister's leaking and you're gonna need a new one. And that's gonna cost around 40 pounds. And if I haven't got one, they'll be without heating and maybe hot water until I return with a new one. Having said all that, I haven't come across this problem at the moment. It's just a concern for the future. But if you have come across this problem, then I'll be really interested to hear about it. And maybe you can leave a message in the comments. And if you're thinking you want to remove the canister so you can clean inside it, just remember anything on the inside of your canister is also on the inside of all your pipework and all your radiators. So it's not much point in taking off just to clean the inside of the pot. On the bottom of the canister, you'll find the drain plug hole with a nice brass insert. Now to refit the pot, we just refit the trigger onto the two valves. Obviously make sure the valve tails are nice and clean. And then I always like to put a bit of silicon lubricant onto these two tails. That will help the two O-rings make a good seal so we don't get any leaks. Then we take the magnet clean and carefully push it all the way back onto the two valves until it stops and then give it a good old tug to make sure that it is firmly on there and the two retaining clips are in the correct position. We then need to turn the red knurled screw like you're undoing it. So you turn it in an anti-clockwise direction and then that will push the trigger back away from the two release clips. And then once again, give it a good old tug and make sure it's not going to suddenly burst off when we open the two valves and let the pressure back in. Now we just need to open the two valves. But what you want to do is just open the bottom valve first and then let the water go into the pot and then we leave the top valve shut and then we'll open up the bleed valve and let the air out. So all that air that's inside the pot does not go into the boiler or around the system. So here's the bleed key. I'm now going to undo that. Let out the air. Once water comes out, I can then shut the bleed key again like that. You can now nip that up tight, dry off any water. And now we can open up the second valve. And that will ensure we get the least amount of air going around the system that could give us further problems. And there we go. That is the MagnaClean Professional 2, fully cleaned and back working to its maximum and ready to go again. You can then put your power back on again and switch on any controls and turn on your combi boiler and just check to make sure there's no leaks. Now, the best way I find to check for leaks is just to dry it all off, then get a dry piece of kitchen roll or toilet paper and just put it in the edge of the lid and just wipe it all the way around inside the lid edge there. Then any drops of water in there will show up straight away with a little mark of water. You may need to do this several times, but then you could always come back an hour later and just check that it has all dried up and there's no sign of any leaks. You can see that it's completely dry. So I know this lid is not leaking at all. Little word of warning, sometimes the valves don't close properly. Now on this one here, we have a MagnaClean uh, Micro 2 and I was servicing it and then the water started dripping out of the pot and it started dripping quite badly. So just be aware that if you take the lid off or you, you take the pot off, you go away, you can come back and you find there's a big puddle on, on the floor. Uh, so make sure that uh, your valves aren't leaking. So just watch out for that. You can see I removed the pot now and that top valve, it is dripping pretty badly. It doesn't really matter that, that this is dripping because it, it's just when I'm servicing it. But just be aware, I've got that much water coming out in the time it's taken me to wash the magnet off. But once it's all back on again and the valves are opened up, it's all fine. 
Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.